Hello, Mary Richards. Hello, Lizzie Lassiter. And Penelope. <laughs> of course. Right on cue. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to today's anatomy question. We are back with our series of essential alignment ideas, and it is based on mom's book, 30 Essential Yoga Poses. So today we're looking at triangle pose. Mary, real simple question. What is one thing we should stop doing in this pose and one thing you'd like to encourage us to do in triangle pose? I'd like us in Trikonasana to stop turning our head to look up at the ceiling. Okay. As your mom likes to say, there's nothing to see up there. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but more importantly, it goes against the biomechanics of the neck. Okay. It's so I'm, for the neck. I'm gonna get on my mat. I've got my second camera in a moment, can you talk to us a little bit more, say more about the biomechanics of the neck and why turning doesn't really make anatomical sense to you? So I won't go down the rabbit hole <laughs> of the law of side bending and rotation. I'll just take us to the edge of the rabbit hole, which is that there are different actions taking place in the neck when we're in triangle pose. And when we're in triangle pose and we turn to look up at the ceiling, we're overriding those biomechanics. Mm -hmm. And it puts too much strain on the structures of the neck. Okay. And I, and I have this idea that asana, that we are able to stay in an asana until time disappears and we mm -hmm. enjoy it. That's mm -hmm. what I want for us. Yeah. So that the law of side bending and rotation has a lot to do with scoliosis, right? It does. It's talked about primarily in the context of scoliosis. It's something called Friat's law, the <laughs> law of side bending and rotation. Um, but it really has a huge uh, impact as well on the neck because the upper cervicals, when we side bend our neck, uh, lateral flexion is what it's called. There are different actions that are taking place. The upper cervicals move one way and the lower cervicals move another. And that's so we can keep our face forward. And this is related to our nervous system. Our nervous system is designed in many ways to keep our head above our heart and our face forward. Yes, and I remember learning about this. Mom talked a lot about this in the scoliosis module of our experiential anatomy back care course, which was so, which is so fantastic. It's not always available because we run these experiential anatomy courses live. They're live online courses. So we open enrollment and you can jump in and then we work with a group of students to move through the material. So keep your eyes out for the back care course. The best way to get all that information and get notified is to go to www.experientialanatomy.yoga. That's the newsletter where I will let you know when our next enrollment opens. So how about I get on the mat and we can see what you're talking about. Good. Okay. Okay. Yes. So, Triangle pose? Yes. So the first thing um, I want you to do is just notice where most of the weight is in your feet. Yeah. Because what happens in the feet also happens in the neck. Yeah. So we want two thirds of the weight in the heels. And just allow your pelvis to find its position. And now go ahead, Lizzie, and uh, turn your face up toward the ceiling. Look up. Yeah. Yeah, and you can feel the strain in that. So the head's heavy. Now, instead of doing that, I want you to turn and uh, look toward the camera. Mm -hmm. And now lift the crown of your head slightly higher than your jaw. Ooh, that feels wonderful. Yes, yeah, see now we're balancing out compression in the neck, 
which is something we'll talk a lot about in experiential anatomy because the neck is the most mobile region. It's the most mobile region of your vertebral column. So we need to be mindful of it. And that action then of lifting the crown of the head a little higher than the jaw, you can just feel how everything sort of clicks into place. It's amazing. I'm going to try from the other, the other side. Maybe I'll turn away from you so you can see from the back. Oh, yes. Okay, so this is what so many of us have been taught to look up. Yes. And often we see the head drooping a little. So you're encouraging instead, talk us through what you want. I want you to look at the wall in front of you and take your gaze uh, down towards your heart. Just your eyes, look into your heart center. And now lift the crown of the head slightly higher than the jaw. Mm. And now if you want, direct just the gaze, just the eyes up toward the sky. So you adjust your eyes, not your head. Ooh, that's much harder for me to do. I have a really hard time. That's so interesting. To, as soon as I thought to move the eyes, my neck was like, uh, because then we, because that's the way we move, you know, we follow our vision. Vision often establishes direction of movement for us. So it's a great way to actually build strength in the neck to just direct the dristi, the point of focus through the eyes, that's what it's related to anyway, mm -hmm. and to allow the, the anatomical reality of the neck to reign supreme. Yeah, let me just pop back here to say goodbye. I, the other thing that I wanted to say, which was so lovely, is when I, that slight motion of lifting the crown of the head, what I experience when I do that is a kind of ripple of ease down the vertebral column. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, homework <laughs> assignment. I want everyone two things. Number one, you're going to go to www.experientialanatomy.yoga and you're going to get on our newsletter. And number two, I want you to try this triangle pose in your body, maybe even close your eyes and really go into the sensations. Do triangle pose on each side. Penelope's agreeing with me. And I want you to try turning the head and then try releasing and exactly as Mary talked us through it and leave a comment in the YouTube video. Let us know if it feels good, what, what you're experiencing when you actually try it in your own body. Because that's what matters most. <laughs> That's why we call it experiential anatomy. It's not just Mary lecturing from a book and like telling us what's right and wrong. Cause that's, I think what got us into this whole situation to begin with is we just started believing these kind of cues and alignment rules and we stopped trusting our felt sensations. So what I love about studying with you, Mary, is that every time you offer something new, first of all, there's always space for me to feel it myself. And then it, always is about whether it feels better that I want to choose that. Not like you don't teach it by saying I'm right because I'm Mary Richards and I know the right way for you <laughs> in your body. But I mean, you know, so frankly, you and I both have been in rooms before with teachers who teach with that energy. Oh yeah. And I prefer not to be in that type of room and I certainly don't want to be at the front of it. Because yeah. the most wonderful thing for me about the practice, and I've been practicing for almost three decades, is the curiosity of it. That each time I step on the mat, it's a new triangle pose. Yeah. What a gift. Mm, that's what, a an nice invitation. what an invitation to be alive right here, right now. Mm, yeah. Love it. All right, Mary, where can we find you on the internet? At maryrichardsyoga.com. On Instagram at yoga with Mary Richards, you will see a ton of pictures of Penelope. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, on Facebook at a little yoga goes a long way. All right, perfect. I'm lizzielasseter.com on Instagram, on Facebook, on all of the things. And we will talk again very soon. Namaste. Namaste.